Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here on behalf of Lucky Tackle Box today. I'm getting ready to go do some late fall, early winter fishing out behind my house. I live on a small private community lake, but some consider it a pond. And what do most people consider a pond? Something you can usually walk around or bank fish. You can walk around my lake, it's only 20 acres. But what I really want to go over is a lot of people look up these fall bass fishing how-to videos and it says follow the bait fish into the creeks. If you're fishing a small pond or a community lake, you usually don't have creeks. The lakes are relatively featureless. They're silty bottoms with grass. And that's really what I want to go over with you guys on how to fish those. So let's break some stuff down. The first thing I want to talk about is forage base. Most ponds are bluegill, crawfish, sometimes crappie, sometimes golden shiners, and gobies. Gobies most people aren't aware of because you don't accidentally catch them and in fresh water they're about yay big. So what applies, let's talk about late fall first. Let's talk about 55 degrees is when your panfish really start to move out in your smaller ponds into your deepest spot. Above 55 degrees there's still going to be a lot of them shallow, the grass is going to be alive. When the grass starts to die off your panfish start to school up deeper. If you're in like a five foot deep average pond and there's a 10 foot hole, they're usually going to pull out deeper into those spots and those bass are going to start feeding on them out there. Once you get below 55 degrees all the way down to like 52, in between there crawfish have a secondary spawn to where they're actively roaming out um, relatively deep, sometimes shallow. It just really depends. If you have a solid bottom, sometimes they'll be a little bit more shallow. If the bottom's consistently silty all the way across, crawfish will move out deeper, especially if you have grass. So what happens at 55 degrees is the bass generally start focusing on bottom baits. Unless you have crappie, or a shiny bait fish species. The reason for this is the crappie tend to suspend. So the bass will often suspend with them and look in the middle of the water column to eat those. So if you have a lot of golden shiners that suspend or any shiny bait fish that suspend, jerk baits will still apply all throughout the winter time for you. Um, what happens is if you don't have those, a lot of the time, certain, certain occasions a jerk bait will still work. A deep diving jerk bait will still work really well. But most of the time, it's going to be a bottom style bait. Ned rigs, shaky heads, drop shots, float and fly works well. As long as your little crappie jig is near the bottom, that's going to work really well for you. Always look shallow early on. A lot of the time there's shallow crawfish and you may be able to get that one bigger bass shallow, but the majority of your bass in the late fall all throughout the winter are going to generally be in the deepest spots of that lake. Now let's break down a couple more secrets. Now this major belief that we've all been told when we were little kids is that when it starts getting real cold, all the crawdads hunker down in the mud. True, sometimes, sometimes they'll crawl out of the water and into muddy banks in the holes. If you live on a little lake like me where there's little wooden rails all the way around the edge of the lake, sometimes they'll hide in there but those aren't the crawdads you want to still think the bass are eating because if they're hunkered in a hole, so what, crawdads aren't magically eating crawdads all winter long? Well, when you take a bass and you put it in a live well in the wintertime, you'll still see them spit up crawdads. Well, how did that happen? They're usually smaller, and how that happens is when the grass starts to die off in the fall, it's usually not the shallowest grass, it's not the deepest grass, there's this somewhere in between random grass patches. And when you can find those, the bass love to sit and hang on those, and so do juvenile crawfish. Um, I put up two 30 pound bags last year on Ned Rigs strictly by finding grass that was dying off the latest. Let me tell you a secret for finding this. Either your heavier bottom dragging baits, you can drag it, you can kind of feel that grass down there. If you're using like a slow falling wacky rig or something too light, it'll kind of lift up and hover, hover over that grass and you won't feel it. But if you drag something down there, you can feel that grass. Another little secret way, have you ever heard of a coot? It's like a little black duck with a little short beak. I'll put up a picture of them for you here. Coots love to eat the roots of that grass when it's dying off. They get down there. If you see coots in an area, there's usually still grass there. 
So if you see the group, the coots, imagine that there's grass just below them and there's probably a few bass and smaller crawfish hunkered down in that area that you can target. Now in the winter time, let's say that jerk bait doesn't apply to you. Maybe a spy bait, well, that's also a suspended fish deal. Now you can take the little bladed lipless like style crankbaits and you can vertically jig those up and down off the bottom in like crawfish or bluegill patterns to where it hangs up on the bottom and rips up. Uh, you can still catch fish on hard baits that way. But let's talk about the finesse game. We all know in the winter time we have to finesse fish. When you're fishing in a pond that's, I would say six foot deep or less, try to fish like your wacky rigs and your little Texas rig worms as weightless as possible with still making good bottom contact. So what that means is, Make sure when you cast it out there, it gets to the bottom and make sure you drag it with the rod as slow as you can to where you're not suspending it up off the bottom. You're still making bottom contact. That really suspended motion kind of staying along the bottom bass love. But let's say you're fishing 10, 5 to 10 foot deep. That's your average area. Well, now you know those fish are gonna be out there deeper, so that weightless stuff may be hard to get down unless you're throwing something like a Senko. So now add just enough weight to where you're positive, you're on the bottom. But right when you first get out there, if you don't know where the grass is, add a little bit more weight. Go with like a quarter ounce shaky head, or a quarter ounce or a 3 16 drop shot weight. As it gets deeper, add that more weight, and you're going to get really good clues dragging the bottom. You may feel a rock, you cast it out that area. You hit a rock, now you can slow back down, throw right there and be really finessey with your drop shots, drag that Ned Rig extra slow, make multiple casts to that area where you felt something different. Or you pop through the grass and all of a sudden you notice there your bait slid real easy, there was a pocket in between grass and you got grass again. Maybe you'll cast back out there and focus there. If you have too light of a setup, you're not going to feel those subtle clues, you're not going to gain that information and extra knowledge and confidence knowing this might be a key area that's holding fish. So if you use that little extra weight in the beginning, get the clues, maybe back off your weight a little bit or slow back down in that spot you got the clue, you're going to get extra bites over the next guy. A few things I want you to keep in mind when it comes to late fall and wintertime bass fishing and small lakes or ponds or bank fishing. How can you go wrong? You can move too fast. One more thing to keep in your head to prevent you from moving too fast, visualize your bait the whole time. If you've ever read any bass fishing books or heard other pros talk, they're gonna talk about visualizing what their bait is doing the whole time. Have a song that you can sing in your head, some, something slow, play some slower music on your cell phone in your pocket, something to slow you down. You know when you're listening to rock music or some rap music, you start driving faster? The same thing works when you're bass fishing in the winter. You need to have this slower mentality, slow yourself down. The mistake is generally moving too fast or not making enough bottom contact or just not showing them multiple presentations. Generally, in a small pond, they're, they're gonna conjugate out deeper. If there's a little, little divot, a little spot where the majority of the bond, pond's 10 feet, and then all of a sudden there's a little spot that's 12 feet, they're probably gonna hold right there. If there's any sort of rock you know about, more than likely they're gonna hold near that rock that gets a little extra warmth, especially if the sun hits it during the day, or any spot you can find that extra grass. I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman, guys. We appreciate you watching and subscribing to Lucky Tackle Box. Make sure to kick that subscribe button, kick it, kick it, click it, kick it, and click that little bell notification to receive all of our new videos and uh, whatever else we got going on. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and whatever those other social media channels are. Appreciate you watching, guys. We'll see you next time.